Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Aopen Tech Playbook. Today we're talking about modern media player design. My name is Miles Schofield. Let's get started. So today we're talking about specifically uh, technology saturation, which is a term that I made up to sort of talk about uh, when a certain market stagnates. Uh, most people, there's articles you can find from uh, and digital signage that sort of talk about when we're going to go from Celerons or the mounting a box on the back of a TV to more of everyone buying sort of uh, Samsung smart uh, TVs like t that run Tizen or, or WebOS or things like that. So I'm going to talk about that a bit. And then, of course, in the second section, talk about uh, key media, media players' features, how Aopen approaches, approaches the current market and in the future market. So let's talk about this whole idea of a industry stagnating. So in digital signage, the biggest one is whether anything will ever become 4K. Media players were at 8K already, but the industry is barely 4K. And the reason is, is because it's not really worth it in a lot of situations, right? It's only worth it uh, based off of this chart uh, if you're standing within six feet on a 45, six to seven feet. I mean, when are you really getting that close to advertising, right? So is it's very feasible that the industry just sort of stays on 1080p forever in terms of menu boards and generic advertising, right? So. The, what may happen in the market, my sort of prediction is that um, uh, customers will focus less uh, on resolution and start to really focus more on quality features. So the screens are going to get better, last longer, have better thermal properties, uh, be easier to set up, uh, install, configure, instead of just saying, oh, this is an 8K screen, it's worth the $4,000 you're paying for it or things like that. To give an example that's already happened is, of course, the uh, the mass market for audio cards have just completely disappeared, right? Because uh, any person that's using doing normal audio processing on a computer uh, is handled by the uh, embedded chipset on the uh, the uh, on the Intel chipset. So no one except uh, professionals need the extended features of sound cards, which used to be a standard component that you had to spec out and add to your computer uh, in the past. So uh, the next question, of course, ask is in terms of cards that you have to buy to put in your computer is that is there going to be a time where just like you don't need a sound card today that you don't need an NVIDIA card or a graphics card where the Intel onboard graphics chip set does everything you need. And so why why do you need an NVIDIA card? So that technically could happen, but we're not any close. <laughs> we're not we're not very close. And of course, NVIDIA is fighting it from the other side because if we go to a future where the majority of what you're computing is just sort of graphics processing, then maybe you don't need uh, that sort of CPU ar architecture, which uh, NVIDIA is, of course, working on as well. So to directly ad address the uh, the topic at hand is when we talk about SOCs, uh, the technology is there to basically replace every media player, but it hasn't yet. And so we're going to talk about why. So why isn't the industry 100% Raspberry Pi 4? Meets the specs, right? Uh, it's basically 30, 50 bucks, uh, supports dual 4K, no problem, right? Uh, why, you know, every customer is price sensitive, so why... Uh, isn't the industry 100% Raspberry Pi? And it's really because of the primary limitation of flexibility. Uh, Raspberry Pi doesn't run Windows or uh, Linux. It runs a very specific operating system where you need to devote a lot of programming resources. You've got to develop your own management solution. Uh, Raspberry Pi isn't designed to last at all, right? So the very high failure rate, it's basically a consumer device. It's usually worse than a consumer device because... Uh, it's really just designed as a tech device uh, or a, a test device for proof of concepts and things like that. So it has massive amounts of limitations to have it have uh, be used in commercial applications. It doesn't really stop everyone, but uh, SOCs like the Raspberry Pi and other type of um, SOCs like that have similar type of uh, constraints where they don't have the, the, the infrastructure uh, like a real OS or they don't have the, the commercial aspect of it. Uh, a lot of people say, well, Aopen, why don't you just make a commercial Raspberry Pi? And we could, uh, 100%, but it wouldn't be $50 because, uh, you know, our philosophy is to make a, a device last as long as possible and be extremely robust. And we could do that, but it would be three or four times more expensive where you might as well just buy a regular device specifically designed to do that. So... It's really the, the, the cost that you get with a, uh, the value that you get with an Aopen device really comes from uh, the, the quality components and the extra machining um, that go into the, de the, the device itself. So when it comes to SOC uh, uh, adoption, right, uh, you can see that Tizen WebOS already fine for smart TVs, 
but it's still sort of lagging in the digital signage market. Um, you know, Bradley back in DST 2015 saying 8%, he brought up all the flexibility issues that I just brought up. But recently, uh, you'll see some numbers as high as 40. But so when you talk about the 40 number, though, you have to remember that the US market is completely different than the other markets, right? We've been trying OPS does great in APAC. Uh, SOCs do great in APAC and, and uh, Asia and other regions because they're still focused on digital signage being like a 24-hour loop. In the United States, we are still stuck on the, the, the screen and upgrade the media player. It needs to be very generic processing, runs whatever you want. No customer ever wants to hear that you know they don't have the right the the right system. We've of course you know these modular type uh, OPS and SDM or SKM systems developed by Intel make a lot of sense, uh, but once again uh, uh, the U.S. market still hasn't adopted these, let alone a more integrated SOC type strategy. So when I see that forty percent number, that's basically what I think about. So let's talk about uh, so these are the three uh, basically con conclusions is that. Uh, when you're buying a real uh, device, you're paying for flexibility, right? And the ability to upgrade and run different things, right? Uh, consumer, everyone's fine with the processor and their TV, their stove, their vacuum. Um, but the market as it exists today uh, is really that two part. You know, a digital signage is always the screen and the media player, right? Uh, LG and Samsung may uh, work to try and change that and, and capture more of the market, um, get more people on. Um, ties in a web OS, but the, the issue is, is that, you know, no one wants that same, te uh, the, that same flexibility limitation is the same reason that people are hesitant about those type of systems uh, from LG and Samsung is because they don't want their solution providers or whatever, whatever they want to happen on the screen to be held back because of some $30 SOC in the back of their four, three or 4k commercial screen, right? That's, you know, super frustrating to, um, uh, consumers. So, uh, so if they can solve that problem, though, maybe LG and Samsung will start putting uh, Celerons in their screens or things like that. But they they've made screens with SKM or SDM modules and OPS modules in the past, but they they haven't even uh, penetrated that much in the U.S. Um, for the the reasons that I mentioned. Uh, the final one is the other one I mentioned about the Raspberry Pi is that you know reliability just doesn't scale. You know, uh, making SOC extremely high quality is is uh, is very expensive, right? So if you're skimping on it, it's not giving you what you need from a computer, which is to last a long time. And so unless the manufacturing and the, com the high quality components get significantly cheaper, you're always gonna be stuck at sort of the same price point for a high quality media player. So let's talk about those qualities in a high quality media player. So what we really focus on AOPEN is uh, fanless or maintenance free is because the cost of labor in the United States is always gonna keep going up. So it's basically unexcusable to ever have a media player feel, uh, fail. Um, you know, it's 350, 450, that's, that's more than a media player costs these days. So you just can't have one fail for any reason. And that includes a fan or any debris. And the technology exists to make uh, fanless devices relatively cheap these days. Uh, so there's pretty much no reason not to get one unless you're trying to do something uh, pretty advanced, like a video wall or multi-screen control or something like that. Uh, so the second one that I brought up before is, uh, of course, AOPEN, we like to focus on uh, the Google, Microsoft, Amazon-centric, uh, cloud-centric view where uh, they're pushing the abilities of uh, digital signers in the United States, right? It's not that 24-hour loop. It's you, you're switching between your Instagram feed for your company to your corporate communication feed to your Power BI to a video to, a, a, you know, a, a, an ad that's interlaced or something like that. And so you need to have a more powerful system uh, that supports modern web technology, modern OS technologies. And you can see that uh, all our partners that we've had in webinars in the past uh, are doing some amazing stuff with digital signage. A and that's why... Um, the majority of the players that we uh, sell have support either a real uh, version of OS or a real version of, uh, uh, can run a real version of Chrome browser. Uh, and of course, the last one that AOPEN focuses on is really backing up our warranty. And I'll talk about that in detail. So when we talk about fanless, you can see these are AOPEN standard devices and they're all fanless, right? And you can see that uh, they go up to, f these are all in uh, uh, Celsius, so 40 degrees C. And the first thing that you may notice is that Y40, you've probably seen maybe some components that go up higher, but uh, the main thing you have to remember is that there's no standard on these temperatures whatsoever. When AOPEN says 40 degrees C, we actually test it to run at 40 degrees C for 24 hours a day. 
right? Uh, you can put, we could put 80 degrees C's on there and then just put a little asterisk and say you can go up to there for only a, 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 for a second. But, you know, so people manipulate these numbers all the time. Uh, but in general, it really comes down to how the warranty supports um, uh, uh, your stats uh, that you're actually putting forward. And so, uh, so all our primary media players are fanless, and then we have these new ones that are the wide temperature version that go up to 60. Why would you want a 60? It's because when you design a kiosk, you're gonna have the screen, and then you have the media player, uh, and those have different thermal uh, properties, and the media players usually has is more sensitive. So you're going to have to pay a lot more money for specific temperature controls inside your kiosk. But with these devices, I, uh, some of our partners in the past, you know, charging kiosks, uh, checking kiosks, wayfinding kiosks, they use these type of devices to save money. You don't need to. All you need to do is make sure that the in interior kiosk isn't going to go. Um, uh, above 60 or, be or below minus 20 and you don't have to spend a whole bunch of extra money on thermal controls inside your Kia so it's an absolutely great product uh, for that. Uh, the other thing uh, to talk about our specific design uh, choices that we make at AOPEN is I have a DX5550W here and you can see if you take a look at it uh, we just have this massive uh, thermal pad right over the processor right and then there's going to be another thermal pad that goes on to the other heat uh, provider, which is the uh, the hard drive. So you can see that we have basically a thermal connector directly attached uh, to the main processor plate. It's about you know five inches long. And the key thing when you're talking about thermal and reliability in in, uh, in media players is uh, as dist surface area and distance. So you may see a lot of devices with massive heat sinks, but the problem is is that if the device isn't thin you have to get the heat from the processor all the way up to the massive heat sink and that costs money you have to spend you know money on um, heat pipes which are expensive and things like that so they open strategy here to make things as easy uh, and as streamlined as possible is that you can see that our heat sink actually dips in to directly contact with that massive plate so you can see it actually gets in so we don't have any distance to cover. Our big heat sink basically goes and scoops down and directly contacts um, with the, the processor and the hard drive itself, which just makes for a really efficient, long-lasting, stable design. And that's really what we're trying to go for here. So, so let's move on to the second point, which is, of course, that we, uh, we try and support uh, uh, real OSs because, you know, as you've seen from our partners, they're doing a lot of really interesting things in the kiosk and digital storage market. And, and just to briefly comment on them, you know, Windows 10 is going to continue to progress, even though RS was a failure. IoT was rock solid. Driver support uh, was great. They're probably going to move forward and release additional cloud technologies uh, to mix in with Azure uh, support, additional pricing models for IoT as well. Ubuntu is no longer, uh, uh, you know, uh, this thing where you have to design and create your own build and things like that. Lots of people in signage use just a regular Ubuntu out of the box uh, as a UI. It has lots of drivers that work with everything. Uh, a lot of our so, um, solution providers are, are, are looking at switching to that. And of course, Chrome is great because it's very difficult to corrupt. Redundant OS is just baked in, management system baked in, all those sort of things that people um, love about Chrome. And I marked right here that uh, Chrome, the way that they're moving this uh, their business forward is that they're going to release a special, they just acquired a business called Neverware, which will allow you to run Chrome operating system on almost all x86 platforms. So uh, it's going to be really exciting because you'll, you won't have that hardware restriction and you, you'll be able to get it in more configurations as well. So finally, let's talk about um, the way AOPEN approaches our warranty. Like I said, the, the warranty uh, uh, is, is the, the real aspect of a commercial device. Because you can say whatever you want, but if your warranty doesn't back it, then it's pretty much useless. The warranty is useless, useless to you. And the way that we create uh, devices that meet our warranty, which is those temperatures that you can run for 24 hours a day, and the device is having a, a five-year average runtime, is that uh, the key difference is sort of these design choices and really the component testing is, is the main thing that AOPEN does, is that we use higher quality components that are tested together from com for compatibility and longevity, right? So that's, that's the main uh, difference that we put into our devices. Second thing is, of course, when you're buying a commercial device is just the general, you're gonna get a lot more stuff that you wouldn't need on a, a desktop computer, right? You're gonna have dual LAN, 
uh, one can do int both can do internet uh, or a lot of times uh, people use them one for internet one for intranet to tr transfer different types of data and more advanced um, sort of application uh, dual Wi-Fi is more uh, stable than single Wi-Fi you got serial control um, for legacy applications like point of sale or uh, screen control things like that GPIO is a general uh, control port for lights and kiosk control, you know, DC lock, you can't have your uh, device fail because, some, you know, the, the DC jack uh, got pulled out and, you know, a, a specific extended s a switch for, you know, if you have the thing mounted high or in a, in a kiosk where it's not easy to ask access and you want to flip the button on it without using just a generic power uh, switch, you can just put a, a, a little button anywhere you want and, and be able to switch uh, the, the power on the our devices. So you can see that it's just a whole bunch range of stuff you can get on these devices uh, that you wouldn't see it at all on just a regular computer. So anyway, I, uh, to wrap things up, uh, in terms of the SOC market, uh, I think it's it's not going to the 1080p aspect may stagnate uh, in terms of the screens, but the SOCs uh, will take a while from the bottom up. But from the top down, as I mentioned in the last episode, um, if ARM starts to support Windows and uh, Chrome browser uh, and just full versions of uh, those technologies, then AOPEN will release those type of devices um, for our um, for our partners. And, uh, and that's generally our strategy across the board is that we try to deliver the longest lasting headache free devices uh, that sort of support those technologies that support those modern um, uh, uh, interactive and digital signage applications in the market. So um, thanks again for joining me. And until next time, my name is Miles Schofield. Have a great day.